So this is a video I never really wanted to have to do. It's not a necessity, but there's just something speaking to me that tells me I have to reveal this stuff to you. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Game from BusyWorksBeats.com. Um, I've been training over half a million producers and artists around the world. We've helped millions around the world. I'm just giving you the YouTube stats. Uh, we're close to 600,000 trainees around the world. It's, it's a very insane thing to think about. So thank you if you're one of those folks that we got to help. Hey. Let me know in the comments below. It's getting close to a mill. Actually, and please like this video because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have had this moment right now. So this is something I never truly wanted to dig into because I'm not one for controversy. I'm not one for conflict. I'm not one for beef. I'm mm. not one to uh, create tension within a community and create disassociation. But today I want to reveal the 10 secrets that these producers... Bro, he reminds me a lot of Simba. Like him and Simba have the same energy, bro. Same energy right here. Him and Simba. I already showed like earlier what the deal was with Simba, but... Literally the same shit. They talk the same way. This is going to hate me for revealing, but I feel like you need to know so that we can all move forward as a culture. Okay, so I have them written down so I don't lose track. Um, but these are 10 things I really thought about and said, what is it that producers don't want me to reveal? I'm talking about top producers. Now, just a quick little list of what I'm up to. I've been working with billion dollar company Razer. Okay, their laptop company, gaming laptop company. I'm on Razer Synapse right now. <laughs> like... I've been on that label for two years, which is longer than, uh, you know, I think if not the longest person on their campaigns, um, you know, for example, other people on that campaign was Metro Boomin, uh, Murder Beats, uh, Sunny Digital was on that campaign. Who else was on there? Um, I'm slipping my mind of the other folks on there. Oh, Dead Mouse um, and more. OK, and I was on there for two years. The other guys were only on there for one. So it just shows you like how much you know how much these companies respect BusyWorks Beats and it's not an ego thing it's because I create value for these companies they want somebody who can create tons of value long story short we work with a billion dollar company Razor we work with the top companies in the audio community I'm talking about like Isotope I just happen to be wearing the shirt this is not product placement I just wore the shirt because I didn't want to wear a gym shirt outside earlier when I went to go see somebody um, but we work with Isotope we work with Arturia Native Instruments Universal Audio um, who else? Sweetwater. Whoa, that's hell of people. Line. Um, all the top guys we work with because we want to... Image Line is FL Studio. And Sweetwater and, and Universal Audio, and they, they all make interfaces, they all make hardware. Associate with the, the best of the best. We don't want to just randomly work with random companies. But I say that to say this, is that I have a lot of insight about the music industry, where it's going, and the key players. I've been around Grammy producers. I've been around Grammy winning songwriters, Grammy winning producers, Platinum Plaque winning... Uh, producers I've seen their process from start to finish and I, here's the secrets okay without further ado so please like the video so you can give me some the secrets let's hear it some energy and some air to my oxygen to my lungs so I can spit through these 10 and I'll try to edit edit this video to chop it down as much as I can so the first secret they really do not want you to know and they'll probably hate me for revealing this is that you don't need thousands of plugins now this seems obvious to the person without a lot of money to even buy plugins i said that earlier but for somebody like me i've spent tens of thousands of dollars on plugins just because i thought oh maybe this next thing has the greatest thing in it or this next plugin will teach me how to do whatever i've gone through the trial and error and i can tell you i use about 10 to 20 plugins max maybe if I had to count, I'd say 10 to 20 max. I don't use any more than 10 to 20, and I have I have hundreds of plugins. I have near a thousand, if not a thousand. I have 800 last time I remember counting, near a thousand. You don't need thousands of plugins. Now I'm saying this because we get caught up in this culture of trying to always get the new whatever, and that's cool. You, one thing I will say is that when you get new plugins and new ways of doing thing, it, things, it inspires you. That's one hidden moment of inspiration if you're looking for inspiration get some new plugins it will just help you feel like you're onto something new it's going to change your mindset but you don't need a thousand of those plugins so i want you to reinvest your money a little bit differently so you can grow a lot faster instead of not throwing it down the drain with plugins but you just don't need a ton of plugins i don't want you to get stifled thinking that you have to have all this stuff to get started now the second secret here that they probably really don't they this is something they really 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 do not want you to understand is that they use the fruity soft clipper as their secret sauce for the drums now i have a whole video on the uh video on this below i'll be sure to link the video but maybe i'll edit in like a clip of 
they use the fruity soft clipper. Fruity soft clipper. As their secret sauce. <coughs> for the drum. Now I have a whole video on the uh, okay. video on this below. I'll be sure to link the video, but maybe I'll edit in like a clip of me explaining what this is, and uh, I'll let this be the area where it magically pops up. Um, hopefully, I remember to edit that point. <laughs> what? Fruity soft clipper. You forgot. Uh, okay. This is a cool looking thumbnail. I mean, colors wise, colors wise. Is essentially a limiter and it's a certain limiter that doesn't have a sound to it. It's very transparent. And anyway, they basically, they crank the gain of their kicks and snares so that it's hitting this limiter. Okay, so imagine your snares down here and the limiter is here and you turn up your snare more and more and more until it starts chopping off the top of your snare and the snare becomes louder and louder without any other plugins and it's a default plugin right inside of FL Studio and as long as you keep turning those gain knobs up it goes through that uh, uh, fruity soft clipper and it makes your drums hit crazy hard okay super crazy hard now the next secret they don't want you to know is that they use Melodyne to steal chord progressions. Now I say steal with quotations around it because technically... Um, Every chord progression has already been used, right? <clears throat> I don't know the law, law, but from everybody... Oh yeah, no, no, no. When it comes to the laws, this shit is screwed. Like even if you don't steal something, people could still sue you for stealing it. And you know what? They might win. Everybody's understanding you can't copyright chord progressions. Now... <laughs> yeah. Uh, from my understanding, you couldn't cover chord progressions either until uh, these fucking industry guys like sued someone for it and they won. But um, that might just be a thing with like those those things in particular, though, like those particular people like had some corruption probably because like who the hell is going to be like what what person who is not going to actively seek out corruption uh, if they're given the opportunity to, would also uh, uh, not try to sue someone for absolutely nothing. But what do they use to steal chord progressions? Deeper in this to it with the whole Katy Perry issue and the whole. I believe it was the Katy Perry issue, yeah. Um, blurred line scenario that's like hot topic right now. I'm not a lawyer. Ask a lawyer about that. But the point is. I wasn't sure if it was Katy Perry. I was going to say Katy Perry. It would have sounded really cool if I said Katy Perry. Damn it, I should have said it. They take chord progressions from old 90 songs, old 80 songs, old 70 songs, and they rip them using Melodyne because Melodyne can interpret the harmonies individually and it's a very advanced software. Um, and basically they just, they take all that MIDI and they put it into the piano roll and they take out the notes that are wrong or that they don't like. They change the timing of the notes and boom, they have a chord progression to build their new pop song on. That's dope. They take all that MIDI and they put it into the piano roll and they take out the notes that are wrong or that they don't like. They change the timing of the notes and boom, they have a chord progression to build their new pop song on. Really? That's really how these pros are doing it. They're not, you know, they're going through all these motions to get that result. They're Let's develop a list. Let's develop a list.
literally using a plugin, okay? And we went over how people take vocals from tracks in our Isotope video a while ago. Now here's another secret that the, the pros probably really don't want me to tell you because this kind of shatters the, the glory around being a music producer. The pros use loops. He's got AG600s. Dude, I was with, uh, I was with Faze yesterday and I was like, yo, I'm trying to come up with these melodies, but I'm having such a hard time. I can, I'm like just going for the strategy of like sim very simple melodies and uh, not much else to it. And he's like, bro, just use loops. And I'm like, that is a great idea. I'm writing that down, use loops. That's so easy. Now that's a smart concept to the pro because <clears throat> the pro is trying to eliminate time. It's trying to eliminate frustration. It's trying to eliminate guessing. All right, I'm back. Okay, yeah. So he was telling me um, to use loops. And uh, it's actually like such a simple, like in the beginning we were using loops and we we're like, nah, this ain't even like real music. And then we we're like, no more, no more using loops. So for us, hasn't used loops since like 2014 or something like that, you know, 2013, 2014, around that time. That's when he stopped using loops basically. Um, however, if you like want to save time. Oh wait, no, what did he say? He said something, I was saying something loops okay now that's a smart concept to the pro because the pro is trying to eliminate time time He's trying to eliminate frustration frustration trying to eliminate guessing yeah guessing is the is a catalyst of creativity guessing is throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks now if you want to eliminate guessing then the shit producer you know who um who doesn't care about music will go like i want to eliminate guessing but if you're a good musician you want to guess, but you know, you don't need to be a good musician to make it in the industry. Um, frustration. It's often said that learning doesn't feel like learning. Truly learning feels like frustration. Learning feels like, what the hell is this? I'm not getting this, I'm not getting this. And you're constantly feeling like that. You're constantly in the state of imposter syndrome until, until you finally look back and, and you realize, oh, this is where I started. Look at how much I know now that I didn't know before. You don't feel like you're learning it, but at a certain point, you'll realize that you know so much more and it'll feel like frustration. It's a different feeling. So you want to avoid frustration, then, you know, that's how you be a shit musician and you can make it an industry in that way too. But if you're a real good musician, then you don't lose loops because you want the frustration. You want it. It's important to have that frustration. And time, well, put time into your craft. Get better. But of course, you know, if you're trying to just make a quick buck, then time is your enemy. Because when you're in a studio with a high level artist and they're, they want you to make beats from scratch, you can't be sitting there trying to figure out which snare goes with the kick, which. Yeah, yeah, but when we're in the studio with like real musicians, we're there meticulously spending hours and hours just like, oh, this one sounds good. Oh, no, wait, what about this one? Oh, oh, this one sounds good. This one sounds good. And then we just keep playing it and playing it and playing it for hours. That's the best part of making music. Um, but if your goal is the money, then don't do this. But if your goal is like the music and you truly love music, then this is like the whole purpose of making, like the enjoyable part is the process of making music. You know, bell you're gonna use, you can't sit there for 30 minutes wasting studio time. 30 minutes, studio time. dude, 30 minutes is how long it takes for us to finally nail down one instrument out of like a track of 40 instruments. And somebody else's time. You can't sit there obsessing over something that's not worth obsessing over. So they use the loop in this game okay? and that speeds up the process. There's like templates. They think of their production as templatized, but they can customize wherever they want to customize, but they don't sit there experimenting, trying to say, Oh, will this work? Will this not work? They have a folder of stuff that works and they'll bring it in and just kind of see what the artist is vibing with as they go along. The pros yeah. use loops. It's, it makes sense <coughs> to the pro because their job is to save time. Now for somebody who's not on paid time and not, in the studio with high level artists or whatever. Or, or who just, cares about music, who cares about the art, the craft. Wants to do all the hard work. Those folks don't use loops. And that's, that's probably gonna cause a lot of controversy because there's this thing about doing everything by yourself in the music production. You gotta make the sounds, you gotta make all the melodies, you gotta make the chords, you gotta do everything by yourself. But in a business sense, that makes absolutely no yeah. sense. In business, you do not do everything by yourself or else you're not gonna get the highest value for your time, but that's a different conversation. That's why the pros are different than, you know, average folks.
The fifth secret they do not want me to tell you is that there is a songwriting formula. There is a complete songwriting formula. Damn. We go over this in our premium section at busyworksbeats.com slash premium. It's the exact Mike Karen formula, okay, from Atlantic Records. It is known to have a formula for hit songs. Let's see what it is. And I break it down. And we use examples from certain hit songs and reveal all the parameters that make that song a hit song. And once you know this stuff, you learn it once and you can apply it to anything. It's extremely powerful. And uh, there is a songwriting formula. Just understand, there's, there's ways to go about this. Just like in music production, there's a songwriting process. You don't just randomly grab a keyboard and just start making a song. That's what we do. You know, when we're actually, when we care about music, it's crazy to me. I'm not even a musician, but I care more about music than these people who are actually considered musicians. You know, there's a step-by-step -step process, just like there's a step-by-step -step process at McDonald's. Damn, I look so much bigger than I used to. Like, that's crazy. Just to make a hamburger. There's first, I don't know the process, I'm just guessing. First, take the stuff out the freezer, I'm assuming. Uh, that might be a shot to them, I, the, I forget, I should say. They got to get the bun at some point thing. They, same thing goes with music and music production. There's a step by step way of creating a song. If you want a song to be your end result, end result every single time and your end goal, there's a step by step process. And you have to learn that process if you want to get to that end point. This is the reason why you're stuck all the time making beats and having, you know, writer's block, beat block. It's because you don't have the process. And we illustrate that process in thorough detail at busyworksbeats.com slash premium so not only do we show you the songwriting secrets that pros like mike karen would use in atlantic and other songwriting geniuses but we also show you the step-by-step -step songwriting process all in the premium section so next up is the pros use templates now this is not as risque to say as that they use loops but templates this is worse a little bit easier understood in the engineering world because when you using a, templates is worse but no artists come in and you don't know who the artist is and you don't know their style you have to have at least a bare standard for something that they can enjoy now engineers will understand this a little bit more and let me know in the comments if you're an engineer because i respect engineers because they just have to deal with so many subjective perspectives so for example if a random artist comes in your studio one day and you know they want auto-tune and all these things they want their voice to sound a certain way they might be male they might be female uh okay if that's what he's talking about then yeah yeah Understandable. Use templates and yeah. Engineers who are smart have templates pr before the artist even comes in. So they have a male template. I would just call them presets. But then presets have a different meaning in music. Pre like presets, like uh, uh, consumer made presets or whatever, or like user generated presets, uh, user curated, created presets are in, in Photoshop and things like that. Other programs I know um, have, a, have a much different meaning than they do in music production but um yeah if, if you're gonna call this templates because in other softwares templates literally means all the work is done for you like from start to finish you just like change your it's like copying somebody else's homework but putting a different name on top that's what templates are in other programs but if this is what you're considering templates like like uh, uh i always hear oh it's the sauce right like oh how this guy I, i'm like you got the song engineered by this guy right and, and he's like He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why are you not organized with your files? Where's the file? He's like, he has it on his computer. And I'm like, get it. And he's like, I have the original, he has the project file, the, the master version, the mixed and master version. And I'm like, well, get that file. And he's like, no, 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 he won't. There's no way he'd give it to me because he doesn't want to give away the sauce because he knows if I have the file, I'm going to look in there and see, you know, the way he's set up all his effects and things like that. He doesn't want to give that secret away. And it always blew my mind. It's like, to me, the value of a, musician, of a musician doesn't come in their in their assets and the stuff they have on their hard drive and how closely they t guard it. No, the value of a musician comes in their ability to continuously create new stuff and be creative. If you're truly a good musician, you should be able to innovate faster than people can copy you. Email template. They have a hip hop template. They have an R&B template because all those templates have to have different things change. Like R&B might not have as much auto tune because it'll make the vocal sound fake. Whereas hip hop would have a lot of auto tune. 
and you know there's a billion different things they could change about it but the main thing is that when you're recording to into a, a DAW of your choice you naturally want to hear like effects on your voice like reverb auto-tune delay those things make you more animated while you're singing so you get to hear back the effects of your voice and that's something that engineers set up most of the time ahead of the time if they templatize so using templates is key and this also stems to music producers who use templates I know top music producers that we've helped with our templates from the ultimate producer bundle in the ultimate producer bundle you have templates and this is the same exact thing except this template. I'm gonna go on this thing and download some of those and it's it not right only here. gives you the mixing presets and mixing templates but it also gives you the sound templates the sounds that work together the songwriting structures that work you know we have the all the plugins arranged everything is properly routed so it's pre-made for you and you can customize anything you want that's the power of a template. Why waste a bunch of time trying to figure out what works with what? You know, you're gonna be experimenting for days and days and days. It's unnecessary. It's just like science experiments. That's why they call it the lab. We're literally experimenting if we do not use templates. Now the next secret here. Experiment, yeah. Is that the pros use analog sounds. And when I say analog, I mean, generally speaking, hardware sounds, okay? And with hardware, it's a lot different. Um, so not just hardware because analog you can have hardware digital sounds I don't want to get into the whole science of it the point is analog sound is more rich in my opinion you could feel it more like in the center of your head it has a depth that other digital plugins and synthesizers don't have and analog just you could feel it okay and the reason I'm telling you that is because they may be doing videos online showing you that they use Omnisphere for example or Nexus or what's another plugin people love that's a digital synth. Um, what else is a plugin? Somebody help me in the comments below. I'm going blank. It's crazy how he mentioned those two particularly. But XYZ plugin. They'll show you that plugin. And chances are the plugin has a digital sound. Let's say, yeah. So I'm not here to throw shots. But let's say it's whatever plugin it is. It has a digital sound to it. And they're showing you the digital stuff. But they're not showing you the real depth to their sound comes from analog hardware. Like behind me I have a Prophet. 08 from Dave Smith Instruments. I have the Moog up there. I don't know if you can see it, but Moog. I have to my right another Prophet 6. You can't see it, it's off cam. Okay, so the sounds from these synthesizers are way more in depth than anything digital. Way more in depth. Um, another thing is that you have to understand is that the pros use expensive microphones. Now, I was watching a video which was kind of hilarious on the uh, SSL. Um, what is it? SSL six, a uh, little small mixing console, a uh, mix mixer. I forget the exact. Oh, I just downloaded these. Me, but the SSL new mix mixer that came out. Now somebody made in the comments. They were like, "Oh, you know, casually using a Sony C eight hundred mic, and that mic costs eight thousand dollars." Okay, and they're in a studio that has acoustically treated walls. Chances are your room is like my room. You don't have a bunch of stuff on the walls. Chances are. You know, you're not using a $8,000 microphone. You're using a $400 Shure SM7B microphone. So with that difference, you're hearing that quality that you hear on a Young Thug album or who else just came out? Chris Brown or uh, who else just popped up with it? Drake. Okay. That's the quality they get because they spend the money and invest it in that. And it's a dramatic difference than me just speaking on the Shure SM7B in an untreated room with my door open where you can hear my hallway. Okay. Now, when you're in a treated environment with acoustic treatment and high, very expensive microphones and you have all the electricity stuff that engineers know who build studios that gets rid of all the buzz and everything, of course your vocals are going to sound crisp without any plugins because all that stuff, people spent tens of thousands of dollars getting that quality. Now, I want, I'm saying this because the pros don't want you to understand that there's a huge difference and you can only max out your potential on the computer to a certain degree. Your mix can only go to about 70%. And that extra 30% that you hear on Drake's album, Chris Brown's album, whoever's album that's super crisp, that's because they have all those hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment and signal flow and all this type of stuff. You just can't get that at home. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you anymore. And I'm not that I was lying to you in the first place, but I mean, as far as on behalf of the producer community, I can't sit here and let people lie to you saying that you can get the most crisp of crisp of mixes in your home studio. That's not possible in the realm of 
your perspective of what a crisp crisp mix is. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that putting up uh, acoustic treatment on your walls won't help. I'm not saying that your microphone can do a decent job. I'm saying when you have all these high level things, you don't need an EQ. You don't need a compressor when you have all that stuff that sounds perfect from the gate. And I've experienced it. I've been to a studio, a million dollar facility, and I've heard the difference. It's light years different. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate in this point. It's, it's a long point, but it's something you need to understand is that the quality difference, you can only get but so much on a computer. I don't want you wasting tons and tons of dollars on plugins that will never get you that analog hardware, you know, a very expensive microphone sound. I just don't want you wasting your money on crap that will never fix the computer problem, okay? Um, next up is that a lot of producers who will hate me for saying this, they recycle drums from old drum machines. Like, the majority of the drums you love, not the majority, because some recycle. are new, some have new characteristics, but the majority of the drums you love come from old drum machines. Got just it. edited in a different way. Now, I do respect producers who edit, mix, and try to change the sound, but a lot of folks just copy and paste the sound from old drum machines and call it call it a day. Now, that's fine as far as curating sound. I get that, too. I'm not here to bash anybody with a drum kit. I'm saying that the majority of those sounds come from the retro drum machines, whether you knew it or not. Now, that's all I'm going to say on that. But we can get into the debate, but I do respect designers who take a sound, they EQ it, they make the kick thumpier, because a lot of kicks in those drum machines are not thumpy. They're just like, boom, boom, you know, but producers nowadays not a mix, so they make it go boom. You know, it's a lot different. You're changing the kick. So I do respect producers who understand that. But I just want to show you that a lot of the drum sounds come from those old retro drum machines. That's all I'm here to really illustrate. I'm not here to bash anybody's business because I respect everybody. And lastly, I want to say that I respect people who curate just as much as people who, excuse me, delve into pure design from the ground up. Curation is a skill as well. All right. So the ninth secret here is that engineers do most of the work that all the pro producers like take credit for. Like if you watch a lot of pro producers they can't even explain half the stuff because one they don't know yeah it. yeah, yeah. And two they hire pro mixing engineers to mix their tracks so it takes it from this is the great importance in having skills in your skill set and if you're a producer you should know how to engineer i'm sounding like a track you might make at home to some that's what made t successful t romano now he works with amigos and all these guys that kanye might make because the mixing engineer does the real work and I don't mean real as in to belittle the idea of the concept of the song. I mean, the reason the 808 hits so hard is because the mixing engineer. The reason the drums sound so separated and sound sound separated is the in mixing engineer. Like, it could have been a jumbled mess before. You just don't know because they weren't the person to have the final hand on the record most of the time. And the engineer deserves a lot more credit because producers are getting all the shine right now, which is great. And I think it, they should get more credit. Uh, or shine, I should say. And engineers are starting to get more shine as well. And just understand the power of an engineer can literally transform a whole entire song to make it sound way harder. And I've shown you, hopefully, on this channel how we remixed one of our tracks uh, somebody else made and made it sound harder. And oh, wait, this guy's responding to me on Discord. Staring at the ceiling, listening to music. And uh, yeah, the engineers do most of the work. So that's all I got to say. I'm not going to harp on that one. That's something that you probably didn't understand, though. And here's the last one is the last secret that these producers will really hate me for saying is that they really don't know their craft. Now, this is sounds like I'm bashing and blasphemy to the gods of music production. But what I'm saying is that your top favorite producers probably don't know everything about music theory, mixing, sound design, uh, arrangement, sound sourcing. Uh, they don't know all this stuff and that's not a good or a bad thing because at their level of competency there's four levels of competency i'll keep it short there's unconscious incompetence which means that you don't know that you don't know there's conscious we bashing 
Alright, cool, cool, cool. On the lyrical side of things, forget about the beat side of things, on the lyrical side of things, look at this. You ever heard this? That's what's wrong right now. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Amigos, but all them niggas sound the same. This dude put a beat over it. If anything, this speaks more to the volume on like how generic and basic beats are that you could just put them over anything and it all sounds like music that's made today. That's hella drums. Way too many, bro. Way too many. Relax. It's not that serious. 